Joe Steele's here with tonight's final thoughts. Uh, before I uh, get any further, let me introduce you to a friend of mine. This is G.I. Joe. Um, this particular toy easily is 45 years old. You can see he's pretty much been through the ringer. And, um, you know, I've, I've been finding myself as I've been kind of putting my life uh, back together, trying to find that balance again after my illness, uh, visiting uh, my local um, comic shop to, I'm not in the comics, but I do uh, enjoy action figures. And so I've been adding to my collection slowly but surely. And it, it made me kind of wonder where, you know, where all this comes from. Cause I, you know, I, I come from uh, working class folks. My dad, very much a workaholic where um, we're having disposable income just didn't exist. And so um, it's, it, I always kind of imagine what my folks must've gone through because my siblings and I, you know, we were raised mostly in the, in the sixties during this, huge boom when you know every little kid was exposed to all these commercials about all these great toys and i can't imagine uh how much we must have bugged my folks to get us the latest and the greatest and uh, you know they did what they could and so in my case you know got gi joe uh here but obviously without all the um without all the accessories which is how you know game companies and toy companies tend to make their money so we kind of had to do you know without but that forced us um to be creative, and in my case, you know, my my sisters, my my two older sisters and my mom were relatively crafty, and so I learned how to sew, and so that thus uh, this poor this poor GI Joe who's definitely been through the ringer, um, as evidence of of my handiwork here in his in his tunic, which is horribly falling apart. In fact, the only piece of original uniform that this poor guy has is his. Um, is his trousers, is his, is his khaki trousers. And uh, he's lost his helmet, he's lost his boots. Um, in fact, this guy has two right hands. Uh, my, my, in, in, well, in, uh, you know, we discovered that you could remove the arm at one point and apparently uh, it got, the, the arm got removed and never properly replaced and so somehow he inherited two right arms. In fact, I have a, a reason to believe that this, in fact, is not my original G.I. Joe because I, I seem to remember that my G.I. Joe was dark-haired like me and this guy is more light-haired uh, like my best friend uh, from the time, uh, Cregan McConnell. So I'm sure there's some story behind the reasons why I ended up uh, with this guy and you know who, who, who knows whatever happened to the G.I. Joe that I actually played with as a kid. Um, so action figures, right? You know, when I um, when I stopped playing with action figures, probably around the time I moved uh, moved out of the house and in, in, into college, um, our toys, most of our toys actually, uh, fit into a, um, a cowhide leather saddle bag, you know, little 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 bag. Uh, so they're mostly like a, um, matchbox cars and that sort of thing. And I'm certain that they got. You know, passed down. They got as far as my sister's kids, um, my uh, my older sister Kathy's kids, uh, the boys and, and Lisa, and uh, who knows whether any of that stuff still exists or not. Um, but I, you know, very much like my dad, uh, in you know, out of college, getting you know the work, and especially when I started teaching, very much focused on the work. Didn't give myself a lot of room for quote unquote play. Um, and in fact, I wouldn't really have much of a uh, action figure collection if it weren't for a former girlfriend who at the time discovered that I had this thing uh, for Star Trek. And she went out and purchased just all of these Star Trek figures, um, mostly from the original series, but some from, you know, Next Generation and some that were, you know, 12 inches tall, like our G.I. Joe here, some of uh, varying uh, sizes. And that was kind of one of the few times when that happened. And then... Um, yeah, I stopped. I, it, you know, got re, refocused back on to the work, and um, more recently, again, like I'm saying, like I said, um, when I I'm kind of reevaluating what's important to me, um, I, you know, I, I relax just like everyone else. But in my case, I tend to watch a lot of sci-fi, and I watch all the programs um, that I've recorded over the years, and uh, or or made uh, digital copies of. And one of them, of course, is uh, not of course, but one of them is Battle Babylon Five. And I, I realized that I didn't have any Babylon 5 characters. 
And the whole business for me is not really um, the collecting part of it, but I think it really kind of has to do with this phenomenon where, you know, I'm watching the series and I remember most of the shows. So watching it a second time isn't about uh, new things as much as I love these characters, I love the story, and I'm kind of revisiting them in a virtual friend kind of way, which I think is also what little kids do when they're watching the same movie or the same TV show over and over and over again. It's not that they're hoping that somehow mystically the story's going to change. It's that they really love these characters and they're, you know, they're visiting these uh, play, friend, play, play friends or, you know, uh, that are on screen. So me as, a, you know, an older po- person, you know, I have that same kind of appreciation for characters. And I guess um, one way that I do express it is that I, I do have... Um, uh, collector's items, not collector's items, I do have uh, action figures uh, that represent these characters that I really in, enjoy and it's, a, and it's a form of play. Um, so I inherited from my dad this workaholic mindset where I'm just always working and didn't really give myself a lot of room to have, um, you know, play golf, for example, which is the example I always, I always turn to. Uh, but what I did learn uh, when I was studying for my teaching credential was that one definition of play is an act, any activity that somebody does and tends to enjoy where the end of that activity is not the focus. It's not about getting the job done. It's about the activity. And getting the job done, of course, is important because we need that closure. You know, just like little kids playing games, when they play a game, you know, they do want winners and losers and they do want the game to end a sense of closure. But really the focus is, is, on, the, um, is on the activity itself and that's definition of play and when I heard that it just clicked on me that that's what my dad did every weekend when we would go out in the backyard and he'd work on the yard and he'd tell my mom we're going to get done and then move to another, something else because she didn't like having her yard all, to- all torn up uh, but it was very much his form of play was to go out in the backyard and you know work and he, en- he enjoyed it greatly it meant a lot to him it was his form of play now as a, as a 12 year old it wasn't so fun to me but I find myself doing the exact same thing uh, on my computer. The, the line between this is work stuff and this is play stuff, if you were to be just watching me, it'd be virtually impossible to see where one starts and the other ends because I've done what my dad did and kind of uh, blended them in, in many ways. And so, you know, play is, is something that is uh, restorative, something that we need, something that uh, we derive meaning from. Um, and in, in, the, in the action figure kind of thing, it very much is about um, these characters and these stories that we, we love. And then in my case, by having the action figure, I'm able to um, have Jakar with me when I'm not watching the TV. You know, he's just sitting there on the shelf, you know, looking very stern, you know. But that's my rambling uh, thought of the night is the importance of play and toys uh, as 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 part of what it means to be human. And, uh, and uh, so, um, so I do have quite the uh, huge collection. And I am definitely one of those uh, persons that believes in taking the toys out of the packages and putting them on the shelf and you know, occasionally playing with them, even though I don't, you know, I don't sit on the ground and, and you know, have imaginary battles. I reserve that for my writing. Um, anyway, so that's my thought for the night. And uh, G.I. Joe and I bid you adieu until next time.